Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the designing of UJT relaxation oscillator or a sweep circuit with uh, some given parameters like uh, amplitude of the UJT circuit. See here, design a UJT sweep circuit with all these specifications. The sweep amplitude, sweep amplitude is this is the maximum voltage for the capacitor to charge. The sweep amplitude is 10 volts. The sweep duration is 1 millisecond and the sweep speed error, ES value is given. Sweep speed error is 10%. Find RB1, RB2, VYY, R and C. RB1, RB2, these two are UJT resistors at base 1 and base 2 respectively and VYY is the supply voltage given to this R and C network. To get the required sweep duration of 100 microseconds, which component should be varied? Which component should be varied is nothing but variation of capacitance either R or C. Okay, which has to be varied, either resistance or capacitance. Because the time constant is completely proportional to time constant is proportional to resistance into capacitance. We know that tau is equal to R into C. If you change either capacitance or resistance, then it will impact the value of tau. Okay, so in these two values, which one we need to vary and what should be its value. Okay, so now we know already the circuit diagram of UJT sweep circuit or a relaxation oscillator. Sorry, here we have capacitor. So resistor, capacitor and from here we are having UJT universe unijunction transistor resistor and resistor. Here it is VBB and it is VYY. This is base 2 so it is RB2 and this is base 1 so it is RB1. It is at ground and this is also at ground terminal C and R. Okay so now if you see the output voltage of this particular circuit diagram. Initially the capacitor charges from 0 but after one cycle it discharges up to valley voltage. Already I discussed this point in the theory part. So if you see the transient and steady state response, transient analysis we have the capacitor charges from 0 but in the steady state after some time it will be charging from valley voltage and goes up to peak voltage and again comes to valley voltage. This is the peak value and this is valley voltage. So valley voltage is let it be considered like v 3 volts. Assume Assume valley voltage is equal to 3 volts and the peak voltage peak voltage Vp is equal to Vs plus Vv. Peak voltage is equal to Vs plus Vv. So this is Vs from here to here and this particular lower level value is valley voltage. So if you add these two then you will get what is the maximum peak voltage from here to here. Hope you understand. Okay, so the total peak voltage we can calculate by adding these two voltages sweep voltage plus valley voltage. That is equal to sweep voltage is given. What is the value that is 10 volts? So sweep amplitude is 10 volts plus it is assumed as 3 so totally it will be a peak value of 13 volts. Don't get confused the sweep amplitude is given nothing but from here to here Vs is given not Vp. Okay so we have calculated Vp as 13 volts by assuming a value voltage of 3 volts. Now first let us calculate sorry let me take uh, 
in the slides. So now calculation of calculation of VYY for the capacitor up to it has to charge. Calculation of VYY. So what is VYY from the circuit? VYY is nothing but VYY is the voltage for the capacitor to charge up to the maximum level. Okay, so calculation of VYY that is ES we know ES is equal to VS by V. What is ES? Sweep speed error. It is given already. So ES is equal to VS by VY that is equal to Vs by V is nothing but Vyy minus value voltage V. Vyy minus value voltage V. So that is equal to it is given as 10%. Sweep speed error is given as 10%, nothing but 0 0.1. That is equal to Vs, it is given as 10 volts by Vyy minus it is assumed as Vv, value voltage as 3 volts. Or VYY is equal to just if you manipulate this you will get 103 volts. Now calculation of VBB. Calculation of VBB. What is VBB? VBB is the biasing supply given to UJT. So V gamma or VP. Peak voltage VP is equal to eta VBB plus V gamma. Already we have calculated in the theory part. VP is equal to eta VBB plus V gamma. So that is equal to what is VP? VP already we have calculated it as 13. That is equal to eta 0 0.7. Eta is nothing but 0 0.7. Okay, so we are assuming eta value as 0 0.7 into VBB plus V gamma for a silicon material. We are assuming the cutting voltage as 0 0.7 and thereby we will be having VBB as VBB is equal to 17.57 volts. Now, calculation of resistance and capacitance. Calculation of R and C. So, this uh, resistance and capacitance can be calculated by using time factor. Okay, so sweep time, sweep time Ts is equal to Rc ln of VYY minus value voltage VV divided by VYY minus peak voltage VP. So that is equal to RC into LN of VYY that we have calculated as 1R3 minus value voltage as 3 divided by 100 minus this is 13. So here it is 100 by 90 it will be around 0 0.105 R into C that is Ts. Okay, Ts already given as what is the value of given Ts value? Uh, 1 millisecond. In the problem, it is given as 1 millisecond. So Rc is equal to 1 millisecond by 0 0.105. So that is equal to 9.52 milliseconds. Now the product of resistance and capacitance is obtained as 9.52 milliseconds. We know one condition that R is 
R lies between R max and R min. R lies between R max and R min. So let we are assuming some current IP which is flowing through these resistance and capacitance during charging period as 2 microamperes. IP peak value of this current as 2 microseconds and R max is equal to see in the designing parameter of any UJT relaxation oscillator assumed values are more compared to the obtained values. Okay. So we have assumed VV and eta and now IP value we have assumed and later we will assume IV also. Okay, nothing but valley current. This is peak current. So R max is equal to VBB minus VP by IP. So that is equal to VBB we have calculated 17.57 minus VP is 13 divided by IP, we have assumed it as 2 micro. So, 2 into 10 power minus 6. That is equal to 2785 kilo ohms. And let IV is equal to 1 milliampere. R min is equal to R min is equal to VBB minus VV by IV. Okay, when we are talking about peak current or peak voltage, it should be VP and IP. And when you are going for the least values, so R min can be obtained by taking the lower values like a value voltage and valley current. So it is 17.57 minus, it is 3 now divided by we have assumed it as 1 milliampere. So 1 into 10 power minus 3. That is equal to 14.57 kilo ohms. So R should be in between these two values. R should be either from 14.5 kilo ohms to 2785 kilo ohms, somewhere in between that. So we have assumed R value. Let us assume. R, which is somewhere in between these two, let it be some 30, 40, 50, something like that kilo ohms. So now we can calculate C easily. So how we can calculate? Because RC is equal to 9.52. So we can calculate C by taking the R value. Okay, so C is equal to 9.52 into 10 power minus 3 divided by, it is 30 kilo ohms, so 30 into 10 power 3. So that is equal to approximately 0 0.317 microfarads. This is the value of C. Okay, so what else is left now? RB1 and RB2. So calculation of RB1 and RB2. These are the two important resistors need to be connected between VBB and base 2. Another one is from base 1 to ground. So let retrace time TR is equal to 1 microsecond. Okay. So TR, how can we write TR? TR is equal to RB1 into C. RB1 into C because the, when the capacitor in this circuit This is RB1 and this is RB2. Okay, when the transistor is said to be in on state, what, happen, what happens? Capacitor discharges, discharging through this RB1. So in the waveform also, this is like this and this particular period is retrace period. Retrace period is nothing but discharging period. Retrace period is nothing but discharging period. So. So, discharging of the capacitor is done through RB1. So, we can write a retrace is equal to resistance RB1 multiplied by the same capacitance C. Suppose if you are talking about charging, then R into C as it is discharging RB1 into C. Okay. So, B1 RB1 is equal to 
tr by c which is equal to tr 1 into 10 power minus 6 1 microsecond we have assumed here divided by c value we have obtained it as 0 0.317 micro so that is equal to 3.15 ohms very very low values of resistors rb1 and rb2 will be obtained here so rb2 should be more than rb1 rb2 should always greater than rb1 and must be of the order of several hundred ohms must be several hundreds of ohms so rb2 is equal to assume to be something like 300 ohms multiplied by 100 of this one so approximately it will be 300 ohms okay so the sweep duration is reduced from 1000 microseconds 1 millisecond uh, to 100 microseconds the time duration is reduced by 10 times this can be achieved by reducing either r or c that is the question given okay so ts is equal to 100 microseconds she c should be what is the given ts is equal to 100 microseconds c should be 1 by 10 of 0 0.317 okay then we can write it as that is equal to 0 0.0317 microfarads that is equal to 31.7 nanofarads okay c value should be changed here so here we are changing the value of the value of c the value of c because by reducing the value of c the charging current can be reduced because by changing the value of c the charging current can be the charging current can be reduced okay so whenever resistance and capacitance are there if you want to change the current which is flowing through that particular branch the capacitance value should be changed because the highest impact of either uh, on either uh, current or time period that will be done through the value of capacitance only not resistance okay so in this way we can design the ujt sweep circuit by calculating various parameters thank you